There's healing. What do you need today is healing. I believe the Lord has prepared a table for us. That you can come and dine. You, whatever you need is available. Whatever you need is in salvation, it's available. With joy, we shall draw from the waters of salvation. Whatever your heart's desire is available, God wants to meet your need. You're going through something right now. There's absolute peace that you can have. Take from the table what God has provided for us this morning. Hallelujah. I want to welcome our live stream, internet from around the world. Let's give the Lord a hand for those. People tell us we're watching you from different places. And so, you know, we want to try to behave just nice. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. And I believe that crowd and you wonderful people watching is going to grow. And many of you desire to be here. But you know what? The word of God, there's no distance. Yeah. We pray God's breakthrough and miracles for you. Whatever you ask of God, He'll do it for you. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Keep in prayer also. Uh, coming in April, I've already got the dates. Um, God is orchestrating some things. We're going to be hosting some TBN programs, so be in prayer for that. Amen. That's exciting. Hallelujah. They're reaching people for the Lord everywhere. And just different channels that God is getting us prepared for and getting us ready for. Um, I'm envisioning three, four different cameras, professional grade, in the house. Um, if you, If you want to be part of that and want to know about how to uh, get that going because that's really where I feel God is moving us also in that direction is to not only touch God's people locally but around the world amen, amen. but first right here and there's more spread everywhere and God is making that available God is strategically placing us uh, in positions and with people and what a glorious day this is I had the privilege myself and Elise we had the privilege of uh, eating dinner one night at the Opera Land, we were invited by some wonderful friends and uh, folks that God has just put us together with. And I did not quite get the whole picture until we left. I'm thinking, my goodness, what a connection. And uh, I don't know if I'm at liberty to tell you, maybe just a little, little bit, but uh, uh, this is, these are, I mean, these are important folks, okay? Uh, we met with the precious woman of God, Anne. And she's director over many areas in Jerusalem, in Israel. We'll share more of that. But the connection was, these, are, these were ambassadors, and still part of that, from Israel to the U.S. I mean, that's pretty big time. Amen. Amen. And sat down and just uh, was a blessing. Uh, the husband, no, nah, I can't say more. I'm getting trouble. So, <laughs> but I'm telling you, God is just placing us in some strategic places. And how many know when God opens a door, no man can shut that? He said in the Revelation, I open a door that no man can shut. So we're in for some amazing things, amen. And what has that all got to do with anything? Listen, God is connecting the dots. He's moving some things and things are happening. Why? So that more people can come into the kingdom of heaven. God wants a, he wants a full heaven, not an empty heaven. Amen. And so that's our job is to, I love what Reynard Bonke said one time. He said, God called him to plunder hell and populate heaven. That's our job. One more soul, Jesus. Give us our city. Give us our state. Give us the army and air. How many? I tell you, we want to reach everybody for Jesus. Amen. Connected to God. And it's so exciting. Oh, I better settle down a little bit. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Go with me to John chapter 7. This has been on my heart. And for title this morning, if any man thirsts, if any man thirsts, John chapter 7 from verse 37, hallelujah. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, If any man or anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. 
He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart or out of his belly will flow, somebody help me with that, rivers of living water. Say that again. Will flow rivers of living water. One more time, will flow rivers of living water. That's what we're after. Verse 39 says, but this he spoke concerning the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Whom those believing in Him. How many believers do we have on Jesus? He's talking about the Holy Ghost. He said, now those who believe in Him, in Jesus, would receive. Somebody say receive. receive. Thank you, Lord. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Father, we honor You. We thank You. Move upon hearts this morning. Heal the sick, raise the dead, set captives free. Let the Holy Spirit move as He wishes. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Oh, this is powerful. In the last day, it says, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out. <laughs> you know, I actually had somebody one time come and say, now, all this hollering, all this loud, you know, Jesus never, never raised His voice. Excuse me. He cried out pretty loud. Yeah. If any man Let him come to me and drink. How many thirsty folks is in the house? I'm thirsty, friends. I'm thirsty. I want water. I want something more. There are people all around us. They, they tired of the religion. They tired of the church as usual. How many know there's some of us that want more of God? Can you get a good amen in the house? There's some that wants to see the supernatural. There's some of us that's hungry for God and just show up in a mighty way. Now, I, I, I know that's not for everyone. That's for some. It scares them half to death. It scares them spitless. But what do you mean more? <laughs> I'm so greedy when it comes to the things of God. I want everything. Just send me in and I'll take it all. If you don't want it, I'll take your portion. Excuse me. Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow. Or out of your heart shall flow. See, he's interested in a flow that goes out of your heart. He says it be living waters. Over in Luke chapter 3 and 16, John declares, he said, but he, talking about Jesus, will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Can you, hear, can you say that with me? With the Holy Ghost and fire. Come on, help me say that. With the for what God has offered already to us. And we never partook, partook of it. Come on, can I get an amen? amen? I believe Jesus wants His church full of fire. Full of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He wants the church, I believe, to live right. To do right. To walk right. To walk in love. Come on, amen. That's, that's His heart's desire for the church. For you and I. He doesn't want us to be drunk on wine. He wants us to be filled with the Spirit. for you and I today. I'm thinking of the little lady at the well. Remember her, Jesus, sitting at the well when he comes a woman and he strikes up a conversation. You know the story says, would you please give me the water? You ask her what I just said. Probably you would know. What did I just say? Jesus asked her, said, that's what I just told her. I love the way you preach. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody get an extra cup of coffee and some cookies and some. Just bless her. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. 
He said, listen, lady, could I, could you please give me some water? And, and, and she's shocked. She recognizes him. I don't know if it was the Roman boy's beard or whatever. She says, but you're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. We don't have no business with each other. Why would you even speak to me? And Jesus said, little lady, if you only knew who it was that's asking you for water, you would have asked him for water. And he would have given you living water. Somebody shout, living water. Yeah. That's what he wants to give us. Living water, not some stale. I can't handle stale bread or yesterday's newspaper. It's got to be fresh. Are you like that? Fresh, fresh bread, fresh bread. Oh, hallelujah. He wants to give us living water. I'm looking over here when he talks to her. Not only living water, but he says to her, he says, the water that I give you will be a well that springs up. When last have we seen a Christian that can come and be honest? Uh, most times we see him down in the mouth and all that sad and mad and, and you know, depressed. I, I'm looking for some believers that's walking in this fresh new wave of the Holy Ghost. They, they they're going to have a refreshing in their life. They're going to have a spark in their step. They're going to move with the power of God in their life. Amen. There's more. Tell somebody say there's more. There's more. He said it will be in you. Somebody say in you. A well of water springing up into everlasting life. That's what I'm after. Now preacher, you got to settle down, you know. Well, you know. I'm so tired of settling down. Settling down, Christians haven't made a dent in this whole thing. Look at the mess our country's in. The Christians, good Christians, were holding their peace, were stepping back when we should have been in the forefront. And said, no, this is the word of God. You no, know, no more we draw a line in the sand, no more, no further. But instead, we just gathered in our little corner. They just want to show us in a back room somewhere and say, y'all can have it there, but don't bring it out in the open public. I see Jesus standing out there in the temple and shouts, if any man Sure, there was a religious leader that said, Now, who's that man? Shut him down. Ushers, get him. <laughs> oh, come on now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe he wants to give us a river on the inside. Yes. Yes. He wants to give you living waters on the inside. And I said rivers. Not just one river, but many rivers flowing from us. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I can't wait for March to get here because there's some exciting things. God is showing us. God is leading us. I'm going to have that big cross up here. There's going to be seven streams. I'm just giving you a preview. There will be seven streams that flows from the cross. And we're going to be preaching about that in this next few weeks coming. It's going to be powerful. Hallelujah. So, not just one river. Why not? Because I see there's such... Among people, so many different problems. I'm going to know folks don't have just one problem. It's, it's one after the other. Yes, sir. Amen. The devil wants to take you out, discourage you. If it's not one thing, it's another. I mean, it just keeps coming. Our society faces diversity. I mean, so many issues and challenges in your life. You've seen that. I mean, anybody faced a challenge in your life lately? We're going to have us an altar full of people that won't admit. <laughs> How many have ever had a challenge in your life lately? Yeah, yeah. Some things have come up and you didn't understand it. It, it, it. it just dumbfounded you and it came out of nowhere. And you go, what is going on? Where did that come from? There's going to be, and the enemy makes sure, the enemy makes sure that that's where you're living and that's where you are. But I believe God has already equipped the church. He's already given it to us. Everything we need to handle any situation, in any place, in any, wherever we go, God's given it to us. Amen. It doesn't matter what the problem is. We got the answer to whatever that problem is. If it's a domestic problem, it's a financial problem. If it's a, a sick body or whatever it is, I mean, God has already provided a way out. There are many rivers flowing from us that's going to touch people. He said it'll be rivers flowing from out of you. So he's already put that on the inside of you and I. We've got to tap into it, friend. I tell you, do not, I, I'm encouraging you, do not be satisfied with church as usual. Amen. Don't be. You have a pastor that's not satisfied with church as usual. I've tasted the honey in the rock. I've tasted the good things of the Lord. 
I've already tasted it. You can't convince me otherwise. You can't take me back to old Egypt. I don't want to go back to Egypt. I'm headed for the promised land. Aren't you? Yeah, but it's, it's difficult. You're going to hit hard times. There's a desert in front of us. Give me a desert because I know my God can bring water in a desert place. We're going someplace. We're going somewhere. Can I get a good amen in the house? Hallelujah. I'm going to remember the story in Ezekiel 47. He says, out of the, the temple, out of the throne of God. Now, I know in the natural, he's talking about Jerusalem when he sets his foot on Mount of Olives. By the way, who, who's all going with us in November? To, to there, There's some folks already. You're jumping the gun. You don't even know where we're going. No, you know where we're going. Israel, the Holy Land, God's going to make that possible. If you want to join us on that trip, I believe it's going to be the most amazing, powerful, anointed trip of your life. Amen. For nine days. Traveling and walking where Jesus walked with his disciples, where the miracles was performed. We'll go to the end. My goodness, there's just so much wonderful things. But see, in Ezekiel, he's talking about a river, waters that's gushing out, and it's flowing toward the desert. It's flowing toward Judea. It's flowing toward the Dead Sea. Rivers from the temple of God flowing into the desert. Why? I believe God wants the desert to bloom again. God wants to bring some healing to some folks way out there. And he's going to use the temples. How many believe that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost? Can I just say something? You're not here just to look pretty. You're not here with a nice hairdo. You're the temple of God. And he wants to flow that river from out of you into some desert places out here. Can I get a good amen in the house? saved you so you could just fill up heaven well that's one but he wants you while you here to make a difference in this world Jesus was only on this planet for 33 and a half years and then he had to leave but boy and then not only 33 he was just like three and a half years and look at what he's done we got some catching up to do folks he's put a river on the inside of you you the temple of the Holy Ghost. And out of that valley flows rivers. Why are you holding back? Why are we damning? I was praying about that and I thought of a, of a beaver. All they ever do was dam up stuff, you know. They hate rivers. They want to have a dam. Oh, he said that in church. Yes, I did. <laughs> Come on, help me nice, y'all. <laughs> Great. <laughs> But it's, that's what I see these little things do. They go get a, a, a branch, grab a branch, and here they go. Go, go, go. And they fill up and they stop a flow. Don't let you let the enemy use you to stop a move. Amen. The beavers, let them be in the death over there. God wants some Christians that's allowing rivers to flow through them, life to flow through them. Yes. Isn't it? Amen. And when there's life, when there's rivers, I mean, that's where the flow is. That's where it's beautiful. It's refreshing. Yes. And so I believe he's flowing from out of his temple, which is you and I. And he wants to touch a dying, hurting world outside. He's flowing this river into the desert places. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. What is out there? There's sickness in that desert. There's disease. There's suffering. There's pain. There's hatred. I mean, people hating one another. Come again. I mean, oh, God wants you to go in there and touch lives. And bring some healing. And bring some deliverance. And bring some life. God wants to use you and I. How many know we can do it? Oh, He's filled you with the Holy Ghost, and if you're not, you're not leaving this place until, please don't, I mean, come, the river is here. Jesus is here. If I hand him the microphone, he'll do the same thing. He says, is there anyone thirsty this morning? Come and drink. Come and drink. So in a moment, we're going to pray. We're going to have the altars open. And don't you dare run out. I want you to run this way. Say, God, I am thirsty for more of you. Oh, hallelujah. Mm, 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 mm. I gotta act dignified for that camera crowd, I guess. Maybe it's too late. <laughs> but there's a reason why God is bursting forth a river in your heart. So that it'll flow into the desert places. Think about that. Let that sink into your heart. What is it doing? It's bringing life to where there's death and pain and hurt. Our hearts and our families and our homes and, our, and so forth and our loved ones. How many of there's just hurt everywhere? There's pain everywhere. There's disaster. I mean, all kind of stuff going on. And God wants to use you and I to 
to bring a little life over there. Amen. I believe this church is going to be that kind of oasis. Ah, oh, that it bubbles up here. But we're not going to hold it in. We're going to, you know, just keep it for ourselves. We're going to allow that river to flow into our neighborhoods, into the street, down here at Fairview, down here at Coles Ferry, and every little side area, wherever the river goes, I believe God's going to use us to touch this city for Jesus Christ. We're going to touch the city for the Holy Ghost. for the top, I'm reaching for the down, for everyone in between. Hallelujah. We want everybody to come in. But we've got to be that river, that oasis that will flow and bring a life stream to people. Hallelujah. We're going to be a church that's full of love, that's full of life, that's full of peace, full of joy. Amen. Amen. It's no good if we just got a sign over the top of the door. We're going to have to bring that sign into our hearts and let that begin to operate in our lives. In Jesus' name, can I get a good amen? amen. Uh, I just came to deliver a, a quick message here this morning. It's going to touch people all around us. I see that in my vision. I see that when I pray that God wants to touch this whole city. It's going to be a city that I like on a hill, and it's going to be a lighthouse to our surrounding communities. And anybody that looks like this, a man about to die of thirst, here comes love's way, people. And we're going to be love and light to them. <laughs> God's going to use you in the marketplace. He's going to use you down at Walmart. He's going to use you down at the tire shop or wherever you work. Hallelujah. It'll be a blessing. Yeah. It's time to start operating with what God has intended for you and I to be. Instead of constantly be the one in need and need and need and need, there has to come a switch somewhere where we become a river. A river, a river, a river, a river. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, that turnaround has to happen, and it's going to happen with you and I. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. That you're going to be so attractive. It's going to be so amazing. I mean, I don't see big metroplexes breaking out in the desert, do you? But I do see them breaking out and building alongside of the banks of a river. That's usually where cities and houses and peoples, it springs up around there, doesn't it? Oh, hallelujah. I believe that it's going to flow from this pulpit. You pray for this pastor, that he would have a river in his soul continually flowing to God's hurting people. You pray for a worship team that's so filled with anointing and the power of God. When they open their mouth, when they strum a guitar or hit a drum, the anointing of God has to flow like a river. Pray for our elders. Pray for our deacons. I mean, pray for the ushers. The, the, who else we have? The greeters and our children's church leaders and our youth leaders and, and every department has to be so full of the river of God that we touch hurting humanity. Can I get a good amen? Yeah. Yeah. We're not going to have one area and if they struggle, we're going to come alongside and help them and see them full of the Holy Ghost that they will flow. Our church is going to be known for a people that loves God, that's full of God, that wants to touch people. We're not going to shun anybody. We're not going to turn anybody away. If they don't look like you, go. 